but what else? I really don't know. This was the original smiley, still looking awesome. And uh, that is the arachnid wall. So we're pretty excited about it. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the vlog. I want to tell you guys something. It is actually minus 30 degrees with wind chill here today. That's right, minus 30. So wherever you are, you probably are a little warmer than us. I hope the start of your day is absolutely incredible. It's going to be a good one here. Let's get it started. And the first thing I have to do to start the day off is actually go through some animals that just haven't been identified as far as morphs yet. This was actually a pewter cypress bred to a Woma lesser pinstripe. This is definitely a pewter lesser cypress, and it's possibly even a Woma. So basically, it's a pastel, cinnamon, lesser, cypress, possible Woma ball python. That thing is absolutely gorgeous. And this is actually from that exact same pairing right there. And I'm going to be totally honest with you. This is one of those mystery animals. I'm not 100% sure what it is. It doesn't make any sense that it literally has no pattern to it whatsoever. I'm assuming it's that cypress gene that is somehow affecting it. But uh, I literally have no clue what this is. So when this happens, when I actually produce something that just is completely random, what well, would do is we'll literally just raise this up. This is a female, so we'll keep it for future breeding stock. Ooh, you're a feisty little monkey, aren't you? But uh, again, I have no idea. I'm sure it's absolutely a pewter lesser cypress something, but, but what else? I really don't know. Ooh. Again, same breeding. We got a lot of crazy variety on this. This is actually a Cine Lesser Woma Ball Python. And there's some chance it might have some cypress too in it because it's really clean looking. I'm gonna have to take a look at some pictures and see if I can find out. And even send a couple of my friends a picture of this little one to find out. But it's definitely a Cine Lesser Woma probable cypress. And again, it's so bizarre how something can come out that looks so dramatically different just because it has one or two different genes. This is actually a pastel kingpin cypress. So it's a pastel, it's a pinstripe, it's a lesser, and it's a cypress. That thing is gorgeous and looks completely different than his clutch mates. Yum! So mealworms came in. How are they coming in? Dude, they're coming in great. This guy's pretty good. I know he's right down the road. Not yeah. even one dead one. Not one, huh? 10,000 out of 10,000. 10, did you count each one to make sure we have 10,000? No, I, I just guessed. Make eight. sure that I want each one of these counted to make sure that he's not short I've enough. I've only got so many fingers and toes, man. <laughs> we actually changed to a local source when it comes to mealworm because we were having some problems with shipping. You know, obviously in the winter it's cold and stuff like that. So it's really great to switch to a local guy. We can support someone local. And like Eric said, they're coming in good. And apparently he's sending literally 10,000 on the dot mealworms per box without one dead. That's right. Yeah, I believe. <laughs> like I'm going to believe you can that. Trust me. <laughs> this next clutch I'm going through is actually a pinstripe, red stripe, yellow belly, male bred to a pinstripe. Of course, this one here would be a pinstripe, red stripe, which is pretty cool because pinstripe is an incomplete dominant, just basically meaning that there's not a super version. And of course, the red stripe would be co dominant, in this case, just the one gene. So, anyways, this is what a pinstripe, red stripe looks like. And then when you add the yellow belly, that's the difference here. So, this is a pinstripe, red stripe, yellow belly ball python. And just for reference this is actually a red stripe yellow belly right here this one here didn't really need identification but boy it is a beautiful snake right there this is actually a cinnapin banana who doggy that thing is gorgeous this one is absolutely ridiculous here this was actually a woma lesser print stripe bred to a cine killer kingspin so there are a lot of genes potentially going on what we have basically going on here is a pastel Kingpin Cine Woma Ball Python. So that is a lot of genes in that animal, but wow, did that thing turn out awesome. And this one only has three genes in it. It's a Pastel Lesser in a Woma Ball Python. That Woma gene just kind of really messes up the lesser pattern a bunch. And even though it's only a three bang animal, that is really beautiful. This one turned out pretty neat. This is actually a Lemon Blast Woma Het Russo. And I know to some people I might be talking a different language. This is just a bunch of different genes put together. And every time you kind of layer a gene, it changes things up just a little bit. I mean, this looks a lot like a spinner blast, which would be a pastel spider pinstripe. But the fact is, is that it doesn't have spider in it, and it has that het russo in it, which is het for leucistic, the all-white snake. It just changes things up. It's really cool. So earlier, I told you guys it was minus 30 degrees, but one of the coolest things that can happen when it's this cold is, believe it or not, if you take hot water and throw it up in there, it will literally freeze in the air. Take a look at this. Oh, 
that was crazy. Did you see that, Steve? Something caught on me though. <laughs> that was crazy. This breeding was actually an Enchi Woma Python bred to a super Enchi pinstripe. So everything is gonna be at least Enchi and then can be a combination of Walmas, pins, pin Walmas, all that other type of stuff. This happens to be a super Enchi Woma Ball Python. This one was shockingly beautiful right here. This was actually an Extreme Gene Lemon Blast bred to a super Enchi pinstripe. So again, it has to be Enchi because it was a super Enchi. In this case, it's a Lemon Blast Enchi Extreme Gene. Oh my gosh, this thing is ridiculous. Ridiculous. And here's another one of the exact same ones. The last one was a male and this is a female. Definitely gonna have to raise up this pair. Oh my gosh, I'm in love with these guys. And that wraps up all the identification. Now all of the babies from last year are identified. Lori can get them on the website. I can't believe it took me this long to be totally honest with you. But I was going through kind of the older animals that were raising up and this one popped out at me. This is actually a pastel spider super stripe. So basically a bumblebee super stripe. That thing is gonna be amazing. It's a female and hopefully next year she'll be up to breed. And just for nostalgic reasons, this was our first smiley that we ever had. Of course, now we have like three or four smiley pies, but this was the original smiley, still looking awesome. So the day has come, I am super excited. I've got all of the trams for the arachnid wall in, actually got Universal Rock sent me some rocks so I can put it on the thing. So we're gonna try to complete the arachnid wall today. Of course, I'm gonna have to build out some of the actual arachnid terrariums. That's gonna take a few more days, but we are gonna at least rock things out, make things get going good, and with any luck, maybe within the next four or five days, we're gonna have this rack completely done and full of spiders. What do you say we get started? So you can see we have all the universal rock things. This is actually the side. These are some of the fronts. We're gonna have to do a pillar, so uh, basically all I have to do now is just kind of start putting this up, kind of just looking at how it is. Thankfully, they came already pre-cut, so I shouldn't have to cut that much. It makes my job a lot easier, and this rack is about to look a lot different. All right, so the major skin is basically on it. You kind of get the idea. We have to do the kind of pillar on the side here, uh, do a little bit to touch up some trim, stuff like that. And ultimately, Lori comes back and does all the touch up work and makes it look really good. But uh, you can see how quick it is. That was real time, probably about an hour and 15 minutes to skin this whole thing in, right? We probably have an hour left to go and pretty much it'll be done. And this is what it looks like now that the post is in. Again, we just got to finish this side, put a few more tanks in, and uh, that is the arachnid wall. So we're pretty excited about it. Again, it'll have lighting, but it's important not to have UV lighting when it comes to tarantulas. So we'll make sure to have the proper lighting for them. We have to still picture out all the backs of all of the terrariums. Have to make sure that they all are set up correct. But hey, that is one big thing down. I'm excited to finally start to see what a tarantula wall is going to look like, or I should say a arachnid wall, because we are going to have some other bugs in there as well. What do you think, guys? It's coming together. This was a big project that's been on my mind for a long time. So uh, I would say we're 70% done, maybe 80% done, still some work. Of course, it's gonna be a lot of work figuring out each and every individual tank, and I'll do some vlogs on that. Should be really fun to make these cool terrarium for the arachnids. It's gonna be awesome, so, whew, getting there. I'm glad to be done with that project. It's been something that's been bothering me for quite some time, and again, I'm not done with it, but at least I've got a good jump on it. So I know that in the next week or so, we'll have all of those terrariums made up, all the tarantulas and scorpions and everything else will be in there, and it'll be so awesome for people to be able to come and actually see them at the Reptarium. For now, I'm just admiring this beautiful hypo jelly brooks that thing is ridiculous i just wanted to take a little break and kind of gawk at a few snakes before i get back to work because listen i have another project that i got to get done today because the truth in my life project never end we just kind of go from one project to another and it is absolutely freezing out here i think it's below minus 30 with wind chill i can honestly say this may be the coldest i've ever felt weather in my entire life i don't think i've ever been in weather anywhere near this cold it is frigid out here let's get inside and get to work and by get to work I mean the next project that is on my plate is to fix our misting system. I know I've been talking about the misting system a lot. What it is is that we have really long quarter inch lines and these little nozzles here, right up here, these misters actually work on a pressure system. So if there's not enough water pressure, the misting isn't quite right. So they've been misting okay, but they haven't been misting on the level that I really wanted to. So we replace all of this side with 3 8 tubing and it really, really made a huge difference. But we ran out of 3 8 tubing.
tubing. So now we have 3 8 tubing. We've got to do the other side. And then the missing system is completely done, and I don't have to mess with it anymore. And honestly, it's pretty boring. I literally just have to go to each cage right where the misters are. I have to replace the quarter inch line with 3 h line, and I have to just run it all the way along here, all the way along here, hitting all these cages. I think there's about 12 cages in this string right here. Then I run the line all the way over here, back into the back room where I've showed you before, where the pumps are, which is right over here. And then, of course, we have RO water right there. That is actually the supply line, and uh, that is how it works. So I don't know, not too exciting, but it's something that has to get done, so let's do it. So I'm not gonna lie, this is a major pain in the butt. So basically what we have here is a quarter inch flexible tubing that goes to these T's right here, and these are the spring. And what I have to do is actually take these T's and all of this off and replace it with 3 8 line so that they're higher water pressure. The downside is, is that my supplier sent me rigid tubing instead of flexible tubing, which makes my job about 10 times harder. But I really need to get this done. So rather than sending it back and getting flexible, we're just gonna make it work. But uh, trust me, it's a pain in the butt. But once I take all of these off, replace all these T's, replace all the lines, then go back to the pump, Hopefully this miserable job will be over. Okay, got all of the T's replaced, the lines replaced, ran the line down, plugged it into the pump, so let's hope this works. I'm gonna be honest with you, that was a very difficult job, much worse than I could have ever imagined. I tell you what, with any luck, this will actually work. I'm concerned about there being a problem. It was really difficult with that rigid line, really, really hard to kind of bend things around, so we have it just priming now. With any luck, within the next few minutes, these things will actually spray. I'm gonna to have to readjust a lot of the knobs. Because of the rigid holes, the actual sprayers actually Actually twisted a little bit but I just want to make sure it works before I go through that next thing hopefully there's no leak okay so far uh, looks like all the misters are working I just got to check them all out make sure that they're going well make sure that there's no leaks looks like our misters are working really here and the amount of spray is so much greater in these than it was the last one you see spraying great spraying great right here really really good so just kind of continue good sprays right there oh yeah this is working out really well this is the last cage here in the sprayer everything is good just have to adjust the nozzles a little bit and then we are good to go Ooh, doggy I'm telling you what I'm glad that job is done in real time that took about two two and a half hours it was extremely difficult we had done the other side with the 3h flexible tube and it was really super simple I probably should have just sent that tubing back because I made an amazingly hard job for myself and Laura so regardless it is done thank goodness they are all set and I shouldn't have to fix any more missing systems after this I couldn't be happier that those two projects are done I am super happy that the tarantula and arachnid wall is starting to come together and I'm happy that that misting system is fixed because that was a pain in the butt and that just goes to show you that even I have times where it's like I struggle through things where I'm like oh my god what a job but then I get to enjoy these animals like this Europlatis for Embryotis which is an absolutely amazing leaf tail gecko and the fact is a lot of times you guys see me feed animals play with animals do all kinds of fun stuff a lot of times my success is really from all of that grunt stuff that I do whether it's building a rack or fixing out that tarantula wall or doing the misting systems or the million other things that I do in the course of the day so I wanted to kind of bring you guys along on this adventure today because it was a lot of work I mean between the tarantula wall and that mist system I spent the majority of the day just working on those two things now I get a little time to enjoy the animals and enjoy the fruits of my life Labor. Tell you what guys, I'm pretty bush. This was a long day. It was definitely a good day and a lot of things got accomplished. And even when you run into a little rough patch, when you get to the end of it, it feels almost better. You know, it's almost like, yeah, I was able to struggle through that and I finished it and now it's awesome. So I know the animals will absolutely appreciate the better mist system that we have going on. And for now, I'm going to end the vlog and wish you guys an amazing day, evening, whenever you happen to be watching, your support means the world to me. And I truly love you so much. Can you do me a couple favors before we get out of here? Can you smash that like button turn those post notifications on so you know when I upload a video make a comment down below because I love reading about your beautiful faces let me know what you think of my tarantula wall be kind to someone today and I promise I will see you guys tomorrow